In the 20 years since Cool Mo D and Busy B, the competitive landscape has changed considerably. Battles, disses, beefs, and deaths have molded the character of MCs along the way. Today, hip hop is facing a new generation of MCs. A generation of MCs that might not know where music ends and the streets begin. A generation raised on beef. Cent embodies the new battle MC, a drug dealer from the streets of Queens who made his name and built his fame by beefing with other artists. But as recently as 1999, 50 Cent was just one of thousands of young MCs trying to beat the odds. My favorite friend and my favorite rapper in the whole world, drop his album, please. Thank you. <laughs> Being a new kid, brand new, nobody don't know nobody. How do you? Get in all at one time. You make everybody that you feel like is somebody. Go, who is, yo, who's 50 Cent? Bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a robber still. You better recognize, nigga, I'm straight from the street. This industry niggas is starting to look like something to eat. Since hip-hop started, an up-and-coming MC could attack an established artist to get in the game. But 50 Cent's How to Rob marked a new phenomenon. An MC dissing dozens of artists who took his threats seriously and his disses personally. I don't give a fuck today about that because I'm, I'm facing those same situations in my hood all day. So if they got a problem and they want to go the other route with it, it's the same deal. You know, because it, it's that or go back to the hood. And that's all that's waiting for me back in the hood. I'm about to stick Bobby for some of that Whitney money. Brian McKnight, I could get the nigga any time. Have keep sweating, staring down the barrel of my nine. But more importantly, it got the attention of a superstar. <laughs> what you could just sold? Like four milli? Got something to live for. Don't want a nigga putting four through that Bentley coupe dope. I ran into Jay at Summer Jam. So they're backstage and Jay was like, Yo, I don't like that record you got. I love that record you got. The song was hot. 50 was like, you know, good looking. He's like, but you know, I got to get you. I'm like, all right, you know, do what you do. I didn't know he meant right then. <laughs> he go on stage. That's the first time I ever seen 30,000 people. He said, I'm about a dollar. Who the fuck is 50 Cent? I'm about dollars. Who the fuck is 50 Cent? <laughs> I didn't even know 30,000 people knew who 50 Cent was. I should sell him a bottle of champagne for that. <laughs> in April 2000, 50 Cent was shot nine times with a 9mm handgun as he left his grandmother's house in Queens. This gun's still going on. You jumping around in the backseat of the fucking car and shit. You don't know whether you're going to get up out this bitch or not, man. You know what I'm saying? And then you were in the rearview mirror looking at you. You got a hole in your face. You don't know if you go at that bullet. It's, it's gonna kill you. Still, when when it might not kill you right now while you're on your way to the hospital, but you don't know if it can be removed without killing you. A good shot changed me a lot. I don't care about shit no more. Well, you can say I'm worse, cause I really don't give a fuck. Now it's, now it's more like I know that I'm not in control of everything. You know, if you believe in God, you believe God got a plan for you and that you're not in control over that plan. Armed with his fatalistic attitude, 50 Cent set his sights on his greatest challenge. This We went down with that cat 50 cent. We went down with that. Who? That cat 50 cent. Who? <laughs> I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know who you're talking about. From adjacent neighborhoods in Queens, the beef between 50 cent and Ja Rule started in the streets in 1999. A friend of mine's robbed Ja Rule. And we're, I'm in a club, and I see the nigga. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, we're chilling. He see me kicking it with the nigga that robbed him. 
and he feel like, oh shit, I shouldn't speak to this dude because I know the kid robbed him, but I know this kid, I grew up with him. Next, words are exchanged and blows thrown as the two square off in Atlanta. And from there, things turned ugly. So yo, 50, what's the definition of a wankster, man? I mean, what is that? Ja Rule, Irv Gotti. I'll tell you personally, the murder ain't the people that you see, like Irv, Ja, the people that are involved in the business aspect are bitches. Like, these niggas don't got no hood in them. He's nobody. He's this the person. Peon. Right, this person <laughs> we're talking about, he's no one. That's the whole wankster thing. Some niggas ain't hustlers. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So when you got a nigga that's not a hustler, he becomes a buddy hustler. And what he does is he tries to eat off of other niggas' plates. Okay. You see what I'm saying? By, you know, mentioning names and saying things. Come on, give me a kiss, you little faggot. And then wanting them to chant back. So that's <laughs> why, you know, when you say the name, I say who? That nigga's a sweetheart, for real. I don't know him. Uh, he's a fruit pot, for real. You know, he sells, like, no record. He's even came out yet. Yeah. Bleeding is nothing. You make a nigga <laughs> die breathing in you saying something. Maybe I'm so disrespectful because to me you're a mystery. I know niggas from your hood. You have no history. Uh -huh. Never poke nothing, never pop nothing. Nigga, stop fronting. That's his personal opinion. If that's the way he feel about Ja, that's his personal opinion. But not I mean that does that give you the right to go making songs and saying all this shit about it? <laughs> I write my life. You write what you seen in gangster movies. I'm gangster to the core, nigga. You can't move. Yeah. Not a murderer. <laughs> no, you're not a murderer, nigga. Ja, you little stupid little looking motherfucker. Your boss is a bitch. If he could, he would sell his soul for cheap. Trade his life to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jai's my dog, and we bang together, you know what I mean? Straight up and down, it's murder for life. I'm from the good hood, from ghetto. I came straight to Murder, Inc., straight from my cell, from jail. People see me on the sideline, and like, damn, Black been with Murder for like four years, was popping with Black. But now it's time for me, now that the beef is popping, you know what I mean? It's time for me to smash them, but I'm not out for the big thing, jump out there just for the chains, the jewels, and man, man, listen, my family got a house, I'm taking care of my family, got something called health insurance now. Nigga, you fucking with a dog? Hollow chip slash out, sitting in the crowd, nigga, just nigga, yes, man. Let me let these niggas know, I ain't got to spit shit at these clowns, these fucking chumps. Word to mother, right now I'm about to go ahead and continue to make my motherfucking hits and shit and do what I do, you know, that motherfucking platinum sound, that murder ink sound. What up, Gotti? While Ja Rule responded to 50 Cent's disses, he left most of the work to the murder ink camp. I remember one day when I seen 50 on the Ave, that's how real it was. He was walking to a dollar cab, and I was walking to a dollar cab. I'm talking about, nigga, we going to get public transportation. And we had a conversation. I'm like, yo, listen, man, if it's a problem with Ja, just leave that alone. I'm home. I'm eating with rules. So if you got a beef with him, not I mean, leave that alone, because we eating together. Because I knew about the song when he had murder. I don't believe you. I knew about that before he laid there. Murder. Like, nah, I don't got no, no um, problems with rule. So when I heard that, you know what I mean? That was like everything in me that would tell me, yo, leave this alone or whatever, that was out the window. I was like, man, fuck this nigga. He's a clown. In March 2000, before they ever responded on Wax, Black Child and others, including Murder, Inc. label head Irv Gotti, confronted 50 Cent at the Hit Factory, a New York recording studio. You want to call yourself a murderer? Then you need murderers around you to make it believable. In the fight, Black Child stabbed 50 Cent and several others. I don't really remember who was there, you know. My memory is kind of fucked up. I smoke a lot of weed. You know what I mean? I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> it was me and a few other people. I don't even remember who was with me. Yeah. It was beef, you know what I mean? Beef is when you see a nigga in this fucking studio or wherever, and the nigga want to talk, and niggas was like, nah, ain't nothing to talk about, right? It's like five of us and five of them, and niggas is getting it on and fighting and bonk some way, somehow. The lights got hit, hit off, and niggas was getting it on in the dark. It wasn't like nobody hit the snitch like niggas is gangster and niggas hit the switch. Know what I mean? 
the fucking not see nothing. It's just in the mix of it being so crowded and niggas beefing. Somebody bumped into the light switch and it got dark. That's what happened, son. Know what I mean? Because it was like 10 niggas in the getting it on in the dark. One of the niggas with 50, like, yo, where the gat at? What? I just start hitting niggas, fine, fine. Cause I, I first thing kicked in my mind, if niggas get to the gat, one of us is dead. But I felt the gap was in the area niggas was reaching for. You know what I mean? And I wasn't letting nobody get to their gun to pop me. You know what I mean? So I started poking niggas straight up and down. And that's the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. <laughs> <laughs> In the fight, 50 Cent was stabbed, and those wounds, while minor, needed several stitches. Black Child was arrested for the stabbing. Lawyers let us know, now me niggas was pressing charges. Niggas said that I stabbed them, and then I stabbed a few people and all that. They gave a statement on me. That's the statement that's floating around, that some people don't think is a real document, but it's a real document. The source claims to have, quote, obtained and verified, unquote, these documents in its February 2003 article on Ja Rule. And what I'm holding in my hand, I'm going to leave with you, man, is uh, an order of protection. Uh-oh. An uh, order of down. protection for Irving Lorenzo to stay away from Curtis Jackson. That's 50, y'all. Oh, AKA 5 AKA informant, AKA I'm telling. In the March 2003 XXL magazine, 50 Cent claimed that the letter of protection was a publicity stunt designed to boost Ja Rule's image a week prior to the release of Rule's The Last Temptation. You little bitch, try to jump off like it's a promotional stunt. Seven days before your album drop, huh, you little bitch. Order of protection. From who? Who I need order of protection from, nigga? <laughs> Your little, oh man, motherfuckers, man. He's a clown for denying it. For denying, cause like anybody I really wanna dig is gonna find out it's true. So how you gonna deny a fact? I had called my lawyer and said, yo, send me a copy over them. And we started letting the copy circulate to expose what type of person is, um, what type of individual 50 is, because he running around portraying a thug and all that. See, if he was rapping about club music and itchy eye, yay, and some party jump off, he'd be cool. But you can't talk like a gangster and you a snitch. XXL also investigated the controversial order of protection and reported that neither the officer nor his precinct actually exists. I smell pussy. Is that you, Earl? I smell pussy, is that you die? I smell pussy, is that you blame? I smell pussy, is that you tie? Y'all niggas is pussy. If I smell pussy, is that you tie? Uh, and Irv, and he said child, and he said my name. Once he said my name, that's it. I look, come on, man, I'm from the streets. I'm not, I gotta walk down the streets. Niggas like, yo, what's up with 50 getting at you, black? Ah, da, 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 da. Well, Listen, I'm gonna get at 50. He's a he's the real wankster. Now stab you up, don't make me gun you down. Your whole career is not but a publicity stunt until I kill you and give you the publicity you want. Yeah. Both the source and XXL's story obscure the issue. The order of protection does exist, though it's not clear it was at 50 Cent's request. Detective William Fitzgerald does exist and works out of a precinct just blocks away from the hit factory. 50 Cent maintains that the emergence of the Order of Protection after more than two years is just a publicity stunt to give Ja Rule street credibility. Also, a procedural question exists regarding Orders of Protection, whether they are requested by victims like restraining orders or issued by a judge as a condition of release on bail. Ain't none of them niggas can't make a record that makes them relevant. Make a hit record, and then I'll go back and forth with you all day. Other than that, when I throw a blow at your punk ass, you just eat it. You just accept it. Because you ain't shit, nigga. And you starving. When I go through the hood, it's because I'm so hood. When you in the hood, it's because you stuck in that motherfucker. Man, I don't got nothing to say to that cat. I heard he got a new joint on the radio talking about I'm in the hood because I don't got no choice. Man, I'm in the hood because I'm going to make a difference in the hood, man. You know what I mean? I don't really got nothing too much to say to him, man. Straight up, it ain't really nothing to talk about, however, whenever, whatever, man. You know what I mean? I ain't on it riding around spending my time. I ain't even going, I don't got nothing to say. I don't got nothing to say to that clown, man. I can't say that I can resolve a situation or a beef with somebody that I can't stand this nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I really, it's not no, this ain't WWF. It's not like I just got rap beef with this nigga. I don't like this little nigga. 
you know what I'm saying, for the tenant so much, it, it makes me sick. While it launched 50 Cent's career and helped sell millions of records, the 50 Cent Murder, Inc. beef has already become violent. Where will it lead from here? Will they find some way to resolve it? Or will these rappers share the fates of Biggie and Tupac and end their beefs at funerals? For the black community especially, we have like broken families with no father, no big brothers. And so the, the music becomes the big brother and, or, or the music becomes the father because you listen to all these niggas. So it'd be like, Ice. I grew up Ice Cube, Public Enemy, KRS-One, LL Cool J, Big Daddy Kane. All them niggas was my daddy, you know, because I ain't have none. And that's who I listen to to know how to have big nuts. You know what I'm saying? Them the niggas who I gauge my nuts by. So if Cube was saying he was knocking this, you know, knocking this nigga off and, 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 and Kane was saying this and this is how you do a nigga and, and, and LL was saying beat niggas like this, you grow up being, okay, that's fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. I got big nuts. <laughs> I'm knocking niggas off. I'm not taking shit from the police. Cube told me this, the bitch is a bitch and I'm not fucking with these hoes. You, you grow up and you get the lessons that you would have got from your daddy, but you're getting it from niggas because they got it from their daddy and they spitting the game. So the game is the music. And it's like you're paying ten dollars for a whole lifestyle of games. The spoken word is very powerful, extremely probably the power of the universe. Criminal minded, minded. Criminal minded. There's a picture of him holding non In 1986, Boogie Down Productions, KRS-One, and Scott LaRock released their debut album, Criminal Minded. A year later, Scott LaRock was shot and killed. When you don't use your words correctly wisely, the results are catastrophic. And so we put out Criminal Minded, Scott gets killed. What do you expect? Niggas getting killed in the rap game faster than they getting killed in the drug game. As more and more artists become obsessed with their own deaths, does this obsession become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Well, this is my last album. <laughs> <laughs> It's over, man. It's over, man. Tupac actually believed that he would not only not be here long, he believed that he would be murdered by someone that he did not know. He believed that he would be murdered by someone who wasn't a huge, big, important person, but it, it would be, as he said, a nobody and anybody will walk up to him and, you know, take him out. Because Tupac believed that anybody could be touched. And by touched, he meant that that's, that's the whole point. You know what I mean? Is if you can be touched, that's it. You can be killed. I think about Tupac Shakur, that's all he talked about. I mean, listen to his music, he talked about dying and death over and over again. And when you put it out there that much, man, you know, I think it's going to happen sooner or later. If you speak death, it's going to end up at your door. Any nigga that think while I'm gone, they're going to take my spot, they mistaken. You know what I'm saying? My spot is wedged in and it ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming right back to my place. Anybody that's in it, they're gonna have to move. Really, if you tell me, yo, such and such, yo, I heard some dudes from over on such and such said they're trying to kill you or they're gonna get at you. I'm like, so what? Tell them come on. I ain't got no control over the situation. If I love what you say to me, fuck with my emotions, where I can't go make some new music, or I can't go do nothing because I'm thinking about what you just said, I'm the idiot. Yeah, I feel like I have a purpose. I don't know exactly what it is yet. I know something, I'm supposed to do something positive. While the continuing competitive rivalry in hip hop has created some of the most exciting music and raised the level of the game, the tension between artists and their communities has escalated. Outside forces in the allure of ever increasing financial rewards have put tremendous pressure on artists to succeed at any cost. Now's the time for leadership, and for newer artists to recognize that leadership. Now's the time for those artists who help create the culture to step up when necessary, to guide and address grievances. Now's the time to return to the original spirit of hip hop and stop the violence. 
Some of the most important voices in hip hop were killed needlessly. Big was that, he was that guy that made it cool for you to be you. That was a major loss, man. Voices that can never be replaced. It was fucked up, man, right? that, that, that somebody that stood for so much had to die for something so small. What will be the legacy of their deaths? I wish that my son was here and that he could go and uh, lie down in my bed and come out of my room and say, Ma, what'd you cook? I miss him. I miss my son.